Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Huge cryptocurrency bullish news continues in this market. So we're going to cover that. We're going to have a look at the Cardano update. DeFi bullish cryptocurrencies. As you saw in yesterday's video, I went through uh, altcoins, 10x, 50x DeFi gains. Because I think that is where the narrative is now shifting after NFT. So we'll look at that in the crypto trends section as well. And lastly, stick around to the end. I've spotted a little bit of a Polkadot NFT project. So stick around for that at the end, we'll cover that as another project to watch. As you can see on the side here, that's the agenda. We're gonna get through that. So if you love the sound of that, let me know down below, hit that like button. Let's get it to 3000 likes, subscribe, bell notification icon, because if the scammers can get here fast by hitting that bell notification icon, so can you guys. All right, let's dive into your Hopium free cryptocurrency news update. Let's take a look at the market caps and then get into the crypto trends. Bitcoin's still sitting around $58,500, just holding its levels up in those high $50,000 areas. Good for us because like you saw in yesterday's video, if you haven't seen it, go back and check it out. A checklist of market points that we want to see continue to hold in order to get this altcoin season. Bitcoin, Trillion, Ethereum, 200 billion, Binance, Tether, Cardano, all sitting around that 40 billion. And what we see on the chart is Polkadot and potentially Uniswap starting to have a bit of a push on. Uh, Chainlink also looks like it might be set for that area as well. Litecoin continues to disappoint since it has done for so many months now. This is disappointing in the Bitcoin and the Ethereum price. So we're hopeful that we're gonna get a bit of a spike at some point and that day will come. The dollar value is good on Litecoin, but overall it has just been disappointing to hold Litecoin instead of Ethereum or Bitcoin or Cardano or basically anything else out there because it has just continued to fall against those other cryptocurrencies. And of course we're here to make more gains, the most amount of gains as we possibly can. Uh, further down the list, we've got some DeFi projects, which we'll have a quick look at, as you could see on the chart at the beginning. I've got Aave and a few others, which we'll just have a, a look at comparing them in a moment. So the trends, Cardano, massive increase again. We were just at a peak uh, a few weeks ago. Cardano, Google Trends surging yet again. NFT is just taking a bit of a breather after a couple of weeks of just surging. Uh, going to new all-time highs for its own search results. And now it's started to come back down. And this is the first, I'd say the first couple of days that Cardano has actually outstripped NFTs in search volume. So that's good news for Cardano. Hopefully it can hold its ground above a dollar, dollar twenty, and then continue co to consolidate before maybe going for two or three bucks. Fear and greed index, 75. This last week or two, the fear and greed index has been much lower than it was last month. So I kind of like that, that we're not at this extreme greed phase. You probably noticed that, that it's not as buzzy as it was after we broke the peak again in February. So we had the, the Bitcoin top early February, then it broke that peak again. And now we've just been calming down a little bit into this last top. So I think there's a, a good amount of consolidation to come from this, which is what we wanna see to get that second leg of the altcoin season. Last month, extreme greed. This date, 30 days ago, 91. Moving on, let's take a look at the news. So we've got the Bitcoin bullish news. We won't spend a hell of a lot of time here because we just need to understand the details as opposed to the whole article itself. Does Elon Musk hold 5 billion? Skybridge Capital CEO says yes. So Saramucci, I think it's actually Scaramucci, they've uh, misspelt that. But he believes so because we're looking at Bitcoin as a renewable replacement for fossil fuels and Bitcoin demonetizes gold, RE, equities and art becomes a dominant store of value. The article goes on to say there's been a lot of FUD around Bitcoin mining and its carbon footprint. So something that was debunked years ago. So if you hear that Bitcoin uses more energy than some small countries, this is uh, this has all been debunked because it looks to reduce energy so that you can mine Bitcoin more profitably. So that's why Scaramucci is uh, also predicting that Musk would eventually invest in renewable Bitcoin mining, given his love for renewable energy and the fact that uh, he made electric cars mainstream. So I think that's a pretty good theory and I'm willing to bet on that, of course, which is why I'm in Bitcoin. Anthony Scaramucci is again in the headlines, Skybridge applies for Bitcoin ETF. So this is his fund. The hedge fund of former White House communications director has filed for a Bitcoin ETF with the SEC. 
SEC has never yet approved a Bitcoin ETF. However, with Canadian regulators approving the country's first Bitcoin ETF this year, some, including Scaramucci, see the US following suit. I do believe that this will be an approval process that happens in 2021. So this is where the bullish news begins to get factored into the Bitcoin price because this event hasn't occurred yet. We don't have a Bitcoin ETF in the US, but you have to start betting on it before it happens because once it happens, the show's over. So this is how early on we're starting with this. And I suspect it'll come somewhere, I'm guessing around September because I think there's a lot of built up energy getting ready for that period in time. And of course, they are our seasonal turning dates. The solstices, the equinoxes of the year, these are very good times for big events to occur. Like we see today, we're on the 21st of March and this is another big timing point. So going further down, we're going to kill our private partnership business if we can get an approval from the SEC. I think that the success of the Canadian funds will make it a little bit easier for the US regulators. So that'll kill their uh, private private business, but in terms of making money, getting their, their ETF approved, I'm sure they've got other things figured out. They're a pretty big company. They'll understand, they'll know what to do, and I think it's just gonna benefit the entire space. The Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, so this is something to consider as well. They control 3% of the 21 million BTC, making it the biggest institutional holder of BTC in the world. So if they control this and they have their own fund, if there's an ETF that makes it less, uh, there's less reason for people to want to invest in Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust when you can just go and invest in an ETF, save money on the fees, get it at actual market value as opposed to um, increased prices that you'd have to buy it from Grayscale at when there's a lot of demand. So I think that'll drop some of their business. So I'm just going to keep that in mind. If the ETF gets uh, gets released, then I think that could be some uh, a point in the market where people could get scared as they see people move out of the Grayscale Trust and possibly into the ETF. But during that period, there'll be a lot of money moving out of Bitcoin and that could freak the market out. So keep that in mind as we get closer to some ETF releasement date, whether it's in three months, six months, somewhere down the track. All right, more Bitcoin bullish news. Morgan Stanley this time, reportedly in talks for, for BitHub acquisition. They're not buying directly because they're in talks with Videnti, Videnti, Vident, either way you want to say it, just here, uh, which owns around 10% stake in BitHub Korea and is considering to invest anywhere between 250 million to 441 million dollars. Pretty decent amount for just 10%. So I guess they're looking at the 100% value of the company being somewhere around 4.4 billion. Demand for Vidente soared following the news as the company's stock prices closed more than 4%. So it looks pretty solid at this point. Morgan Stanley recently became very much interested in digital currencies and allowed its clients to invest up to 2.5% wow, of their net wealth in three Bitcoin funds. Meanwhile, as Bitcoin is gaining mainstream acceptance, other Wall Street giants are starting to offer digital currency services, which we've already seen. We have some IOTA updates, which we looked at earlier. We've talked about IOTA in previous week. So just some headlines here. IOTA rolls out Strongholds, Bowdoin Fortress, Beta in preparation for Chrysalis. So there is some development coming onto IOTA and we looked at that as a really good accumulation zone on the charts. That's why we're continuing to touch on that. All right, DeFi news, one inch. So this is just a little interview with the one inch co-founder speaks friendly of Uniswap's rival rivalry. Uh, One Inch is a decentralized exchange DEX aggregator that came onto the DeFi scene in the later part of 2020. Platforms algorithm searches for the cheapest exchange rates among the DEXs that are integrated into its ecosystem. One Inch also runs the MooniSwap automated market maker. So you can go on and read this. It's just an interview. Essentially, I'm bringing these up because we're now starting to see the narrative shift into DeFi again. So all of the headlines coming through on the news articles is a bit more DeFi Still NFT is out there, still there is some Cardano, but we hadn't seen DeFi for the last several weeks. And of course, DeFi has flattened down. It looks like it's had a, gone through a cum, accumulation period. Potentially, we're gonna get some moves as the altcoin season progresses. That's why I'm bringing this up. Good to note. Last thing, uh, last bit of news before we move on to the charts and these projects, Coinbase direct listing pushback to April. So there were some things that went on in the background there. I think they got a, a small fine few million dollars, six million, something like that. But essentially, instead of 
it being IPO this month, they're looking to go for a direct listing to April. So just in a few highlights here, in direct listing, investors can begin selling their holdings as soon as a company starts trading, rather than waiting for the expiration of a lockup period, typically up to six months in an IPO. So if you're looking to purchase a stock that is exposed to the blockchain cryptocurrency space, obviously Coinbase in, in this case, just note that they have they don't have a lockup period here. As soon as the company starts trading, so they can start selling off their holdings. And Coinbase is looked to be valued at somewhere in the vicinity of, they're getting close to $100 billion. Earlier on, they were looking at, well, the, the shares were being changed hands at $200 to $375 per share, which valued them at around $67 billion. And there are other valuations to come at 90 or $100 billion. Looking down here, their revenue has more than doubled, but it's only at $1.1 billion. So if the company could be trading at 90 or 100 billion, that's 90, 100 times earnings. That's absolutely wild, which to me would definitely say they would be selling off some of their stock, uh, getting a direct listing. They've got a, a highly overvalued, that's just my interpretation of it all, company. Now they can easily sell the shares, dump it onto the market, manipulation yet again. But if that's what people are willing to price it at, that's what that's what goes on in the market. You just got to be aware of it. If you don't want to be sold, or yeah, if you don't want to be sold shares that they're just going to dump onto you, don't get involved. All right, let's take a look at Cardano update candlesticks. We have a shooting star. We have a reversal pattern. Not looking good for these tops. We're still waiting to see if we can get some some consolidation here at a dollar fifteen to a dollar twenty, which we are at the moment. We saw high volume, but not as high as this high. So we're starting to still lose a little bit of strength in this overall trend. Essentially for the bullish pattern. So this is just a recap of yesterday and the previous days because not much has happened in the price action since the 18th of March. We want to see the level just continue to maintain, continue to hold uh, where we currently are at around $1.20. So you can see that we're sitting on some old uh, resistance support. If that breaks down, then here are the next levels around that dollar ten, and then if that breaks down, our next levels are sitting at around a dollar two, dollar three, which were all of these previous uh, closes and opens back from the twelfth through to the sixteenth of March. So we have a few stepping stones on the way down, and I think these will come into play, especially this one here. We might get close to it just to test it because we're not looking awfully strong, especially with volume being so high and just being pushed down every time we get to this top being rejected. So that's the bearish case. The bullish is if we hold up and then start to break above. And of course, we want to get back above this level of $1.30 and maintain the level above there. The next step after that is just getting the highest close in its history again, and that would be above the $1.40 mark. So we need to close above $1.40. So that's what we want to look for in Cardano. It's still no man's land at this point. It's still upside, uh, the, the bias is to the upside, but we have some targets on the way down just to give us a little bit of an idea in case this breaks down before, uh, you know, before too many signals happen. So look, the, the, the positive to this is if you have some cash on the sidelines and if it does break down, then there are some more levels to be buying. And the next level on our fibs is around the 80 cents. It sounds ridiculous, I know. People are like, no way will it ever get there. It's fine, all right? We just, uh, have some ideas on the chart. We need to be prepared. So 80 cents is around the 50% level and this is the major range. And that could be a little bit higher if we were to move this back to some of these major lows here. And these major lows, why, why I'm using that is because that is how you use a Fibonacci extension. You wanna project it or anchor it from major lows to major tops. And that level comes out at around 90 cents. So of course we've gotta get through that, then down to the 80. And I think this would be a really good place for it to at least test again to find some solid support before we can shoot up to our $2.50 target, our $3 target. Uh, ideally, we definitely want to get that big accumulation. So that's the update for Cardano against the US dollar. Cardano and ETH, it is uh, just trending in sideways patterning again. We had a day, uh, a day down yesterday and now we're just holding uh, the, this morning. So that's what we were looking at the other day. Hopefully we get a little bit of a hold here. I think we will, and I think it'll just start to base out against Ethereum. These were the levels that were set uh, previously, every time it spiked into these resistance zones. So we're potentially just 
beginning to consolidate above the resistance zone, so make it support. That is a good sign again. ADA, Bitcoin, these things just take time. Uh, same deal, ADA, Bitcoin is just consolidating above the resistance zones. Another good sign, don't need to worry too much there. Let's move on, have a look here. So this is one of the big DeFi projects that I have been looking at, I mentioned it yesterday and in previous videos last week, Badger Dow. Now I'll go into this in more detail in other videos, but I just want to uh, show the market cap against the total value locked. Pretty big difference there. It's a market value of 377 million. Total value locked is now at 1.3 billion. As I looked at it this morning, it was sitting at around 1.1 billion. So this is uh, Badger down here, 1.1. This is on the DeFi Pulse website. So you can check that out. And I have the top 10 DeFi projects here. And what I have done with that is put it into a table here and had a look at their market caps against their total value locked and then given it a, a percentage, a bit of a ratio in terms of the market cap to the amount that is locked up in that protocol. So in, in the case of Maker, the market cap's around 2.15 billion, total value locked is 7.25 billion, which gives it a 0.3%. So uh, the market cap is around 30% of the total value locked. Whereas in the case of Uniswap, Uniswap's market cap is 16.84 billion, only 4 billion locked. Yes, it has other services, you know, decentralized exchange, there's a lot more to it. This is just a little bit of a starting guide here. But we're looking at a percentage, the market cap is 3.84 times the amount that's locked in that protocol. So now I look down at Badger. Badger is at 377 million. It's one of the lowest here along with Curve and Balancer and it has 1.16 billion locked. Now we just saw it had 1.3 billion locked. The difference with Badger is is that it's looking to solve or work on the Bitcoin ex uh, yeah, the Bitcoin blockchain, and this one's at 0.33. So there's, you can see that a lot of them are around the 0.3, 0.3, 0.9, 0.5, 0.9, 0.1, 0.2, 0.8, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.
the circulating supply. However, I was able to find it on their website uh, through their white paper. So I'll look at that in a future video. Basically, you can find the white paper just on their Twitter here and it had a, a token supply of around 250 million. Out of that, I worked out that there was about 80 million that were on the market. So when I multiply 80 million by $1.28, I come out around a, a 100 million to $105 million market cap. That's the current supply. I think that's pretty good. The, the period of the tokens coming out, it's, they're going to be releasing about 25 to 30 million extra tokens every three months or so. There's a few extra details to that, but that's essentially how it'll work. So that could hurt the price in the short term, but overall, something around 80 million, Poker City, NFTs, if we can get that, uh, that, that um, NFTs to push again, then this could do reasonably well, especially if it lines up with Polkadot taking off. So as Polkadot takes off, Polkadot projects take off, etc. You get the narrative and how this agenda begins to work. So that's where I'm sitting with Poker City. I'm gonna add it to the list from yesterday's video and we'll continue to, to follow it if there is some good information on it down the track. Last thing I want to mention is the Investor Accelerator is increasing in price starting April. So we've got a couple of weeks left, only 10 days from today's video to pick up the Investor Accelerator at the discounted price. Be sure to drop your email address in the link down below. This is a look at the course itself. It's very, very deep. You can see it all here. Market tops and bottoms, entries, exits, profit targets, a lot of uh, language and patterns. It's very in detail and we've got a Facebook group. We go live once a month with everyone there. Q&A, we're chatting in the group about cryptos, about assets. So if you're interested in joining us for the Investor Accelerator, leave your email address in the link down below. Get yourself 10% off until the end of this month where the price will go up. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you over there. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on Instagram, daily Q&A, so be sure to follow me over there. Ask your questions in my Instagram stories and I'll answer as many as I possibly can over there. Link to that is in the description down below. If you want to trade, invest in cryptos, I've got plenty of links down below for Swiftex and Binance. Other than that, like the video, subscribe, bell notification icon. Let's get to 3000 likes down below and I will catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.